Good morning. I'm just here about to collect brindle worms to feed to my nano fish and this video is one that is among my top requested. So I'm going to get around to it today and here here we go. I'm going to show you how to collect worms, keep worms, and feed your worms to your tiny little fish. So here is the mesh here are grindle worms you can kind of see them wiggling i'll do a little zoom in here see all those wormies this is a gorgeous healthy culture very established very established so i yesterday fed some of this flake food, fish food, on the mesh here. The worms crawled up onto the mesh, ate it, and now it's all gone, and some of the worms remain on the mesh. There's a bit of dirt on this mesh, so I'm, tr I'm gonna try, well, there's not really anything I can do, so I'll just do this. I'm only gonna collect a few worms from this one, just because there's so much dirt on it, and I really don't wanna get a whole bunch of dirt in the tanks today, so. Here. I'm gonna collect a few, a few of them, so you can see a few. So I've, this is actually just old fish food. It's either expired or like somebody's given it to me because their fish don't like it. I gladly accept old expired fish food because I have lots of worms to feed and they love old fish food. So I take some of that, put it on here, keep it a little bit moist. What you wanna do is this is coconut fiber. You want it to be good and moist, but not so wet that when you turn it, there would be any drip come out, like fully dry. There's no drip on the side, but this is actually very, very, like quite wet. It's like borderline gonna not be able to absorb any more water. Ooh, sorry. So, as you can see, I'm new. <laughs> Here's the next one. Alright, this one's banging too. So there's not really so much dirt on this mesh. I try to keep them a little cleaner. So you can kind of see that there are worms on here. But you're really going to see them when you give it a little dip into the water. And then you just place it back on here. Grindle worms, I, in my experience, will live around 24 hours in the water. So your fish do have a good opportunity to hunt them out and eat them over the full day. So I usually only feed grindle worms one time a day. And I'll feed a little bit. Like I'll feed a lot to a tank because I've got a lot. My tanks are very established. I do have quite a lot going on in the tanks. Like if the fish aren't eating them, then there's shrimp and snails gonna eat them. Like they're going to get eaten. There you go again. Okay, good. It looks so good. Like the culture itself is so really, it's been established for, I don't know, about a month. I won't sell them until they're at least two weeks established and I see like a good worm bed underneath the mesh, then then they're good and somebody can, can grab the culture. But I don't sell them unless they're good and established. Takes a little bit of time, but not too much. And then once you got it, if you just keep it going and then you can reculture with some fresh coconut fiber and a new styrofoam, I personally will use like a painter's tape or something just to cover the hole because I there is ventilation it's not airtight this is a styrofoam let's be real we don't need to leave the hole open and, and allow a hole for like real bugs to get into no thank you I've kept these for years with the hole covered it's fine So 
this is how I spend a good portion of my day usually. It's just feeding fish. I'm a lot more efficient when I'm not on video doing this, so. I'm gonna just leave it at that. I have a lot more over here, but we'll do these ones and I'm gonna just show you how I will collect them out of here to feed to my fish. So I find that the worms do really settle on the bottom pretty quickly. And then you get kind of suspended, tiny, tiny micro grindle worms, which are great for for teeny tiny fry, but they do also sink. So if you're trying to feed fry that exclusively eat at the surface, you're gonna want a different kind of micro food than this. These guys are good for bottom dwellers, maybe quarries and, and other fish that are along the bottom. I love feeding them to my scarlet bodies. Um, I find that also like the larger size grindle worms are good for betas. They love them. So I'm just going to pour all the top water off into a second container because I'm going to, I collect them separately. Anyways, you don't need to do that because you may not be raising as many fry. So here I'll, I don't mind if I get a little bit of dirt, but I mean, Let's try not to get extra about it. I think it's going, these guys are going in too, so not, doesn't really matter. Anyway. All right, so we got the worms in here. You can be a little bit more, you know, particular about the dirt going into your tank, but for me, it's not really such a big deal. There's, it's not gonna make a difference. These are like 30 and 50 gallon tanks with a ton of nano life and breeding. So here. I already put some worms in here, so they're all like out and about. Just give it a little. So I use a pipette to feed because I don't actually put the pipette into the water so that I can feed multiple tanks if I need to and there's no cross-contamination because I'm really particular about cross-contamination. These guys are ridiculous. Hey. Can you drop that in here yet? Okay, and then just squeeze a little bit into the water. reflection. And it's a hit. They're so cute. 